I'm gonna share with you the top five biggest mistakes that I see walleye anglers making right now during the summertime period that is preventing them from catching more fish. And I'm not gonna waste your time with a big long intro. Let's get right into the tips. So the first mistake that I see anglers make is vacating the weeds. You know, a lot of people go out in spring and they'll target weeds with jigging a shiner or rip jigging. And to be honest, there's really not a lot of good reason to leave some of those weeds. As we get further into the summer, these weeds start to grow up and they actually become better habitat for walleyes. Most anglers, what they like to do is they like to fish up shallow. You know, they might target eight to 12 foot depth range for weeds. And then once we start sneaking up into the 70 plus degree range, they'll actually move out into deeper structure and target fish right on those deeper breaks. That's not always the best call this time of year. Once we get a little bit later into the season and sort of like that early fall period, you'll start to see some of those fish push out even deeper than they are right now. But the weeds can be really good. So right now I'm actually just pulled up here on the shoreline because it's a really windy day. And after I'm done shooting this video, I'm gonna go out and practice for a, a walleye tournament that I got coming up tomorrow. But. Uh, what I'm gonna be doing while I'm out there is primarily targeting weeds in that mid-depth range, anywhere from like eight or 10 to like 15 foot or so. That's where a lot of the walleyes are still stacked up throughout the summer. So don't rule out the weeds, but let's move on to the next mistake. Mistake number two is not speeding up your presentation. When, it's, when the water temperatures are a lot colder in spring, you know, you might pitch a jig out there and drag it back, maybe give it a little pop every now and then. And uh, that's a great way to catch walleyes in spring. But as water temperatures start to rise up, you wanna have your presentation and uh, how quickly you fish these baits. You want that to rise up as well. So when you're fishing a jig, you might cast it out and you might give it a pop drag it a little bit, pop, or something like that. I was actually out with Brian Brosdahl recently and he was fishing a jig and a minnow way more aggressively than you would consider and he was absolutely crushing us too. So there's that, that's something to consider. Um, I remember another memory I have was fishing with my great uncle Al, which who some of you probably know, and we were rip jigging, basically like a jig and a fluke style plastic and we were fishing up in the weeds great place to catch walleyes this time of year. And you would not even believe how fast he was fishing in. Rip, rip, rip. And you're basically just hopping that bait over the weeds and ripping it like crazy. That's just incredibly fast. And I think water temperatures at that time were, they were still in the 60s. So we weren't even full blown summer. But as that water temperature rises, the metabolism of the fish also rises. And more often than not, the way to get bit this time of year is not slowing the bait down because, because it's a slow bite or whatever, or because the fish are being picky. It's more playing faster, covering water, and finding fish that are more likely to bite, and then eliciting a reaction strike from those fish. So whether you're ripping a jig, ripping a puppet minnow or something like that, or you're pulling crankbaits, that can be another effective way to catch fish as well, which we actually recently had some success doing that or basically like trolling a spinner rig behind like a little bullet sinker over the weeds or something like that. That's another great way to catch, to catch walleyes this time of year. The long story short with this particular mistake is that speed kills in a good way. So make sure you're speeding up your presentation this time of year. Mistake number three is not using leaders that are long enough. So if you run braided line, you want to for sure be running a fluorocarbon leader unless you're fishing in the absolute dirtiest river reservoir type fisheries. You want a fluorocarbon leader and actually I would even argue in some of those dirty situations you actually still want a fluorocarbon leader just for a little extra stretch um, as you're fighting those fish. But a lot of people will run like a fluorocarbon leader that's like this long or like this long or something like that. And for me, in my opinion, that's way too short. A lot of the lakes that I fish, if you came out on like a flat, calm day, you could see 10, 15, even 20 feet down um, with just some of the clarity on some of these lakes with zebra mussels that have come in over the last 
couple decades and uh, a lot of these lakes are just really clear and a lot of these walleyes are also really pressured. So anything you can do to put the odds in your favor, um, you definitely need to be doing that. This one right here, I think the leader actually snapped about halfway down. This is way too short on pretty much any fishery that has like over five foot of clarity. Um, but for me personally, I actually like to do leaders that are actually really long. Sort of in that like 10 plus foot range is what I like to do. If you're gonna do leaders that are that long, you don't wanna connect it with a swivel, you wanna connect it with some sort of some sort of knot. So you're gonna have to go on YouTube and look up some knots. I'm not gonna teach you that in, the, in this video. It's kind of important all season long. So right now during the summer period, it comes into play for sure. Even if you're fishing fast, you know, if you're bobber fishing, you know, you're pretty much gonna want a leader that at least goes halfway up to the surface, if not more. Uh, but even if you're like rip jigging, fishing really quickly, fishing, you know, a pub and minnow jig and wrap type deal, um, you're gonna want as much uh, invisibility just above your bait as possible. But it's just really important, especially if you fish somewhere where there's pressure. So keep that in mind. Don't run fluorocarbon leaders that look like this. And by the way, for the most part, I'm running like six or eight pound fluorocarbon leader. On uh, presentations that are a little bit more finesse, like bobber fishing, like I'll do six pound. Um, and then if I'm rip, rip jigging and it's a little bit more hand to hand combat in the weeds, in those scenarios, I'll upsize to eight. Just because when they come in and snap it, you know, and I set the hook, like that's a lot of pressure on this line right here. And also like you run into uh, more pike when you're fishing up shallow as well. So all things to consider, but don't run leaders that look like this. Mistake number four is not using one of these guys right here, a slip float. Honestly, the absolute most deadly and easiest way to catch walleyes during the summer is with a float. It's just really, really tough to beat a little, uh, tiny little jig or a tiny little hook with just a leech fluttering like this right in their face. You can put night crawlers on there, you can put minnows as well. Almost nobody uh, bobber fishes with minnows, uh, but that's actually a really effective way to catch fish. And that's actually kind of a little bit of a spoiler for when we get later in into the season, like fall. A, uh, a lot of people like to rig, and when they're rigging, you know, it's more or less kind of close to the boat. Something that I like to do is actually get a bobber out away from the boat with one of those bigger minnows underneath it, and that can just be an absolute recipe for disaster when you're chasing walleyes. Disaster in a good way. Another great strategy is using like live scope or mega live to find where the fish are. Oh, I see three of them right there. And there's no better way to get them to bite than drop a bobber right on top of their head. Honestly, it's kind of cheating in a lot of ways. What's also great about bobbers is you can use them in conditions where it's like really, really hard to fish. If you just cast out, and when I say hard to fish, I mean like maybe the wind is blowing like crazy and uh, it's hard to hold boat position. It's hard to uh, keep your jigs close to the bottom or something like that. In some cases, it might even be hard to troll depending on what kind of boat you have, if you have a smaller boat. Uh, but you can always toss a bobber out there. Even when it's wavy, the bait is still in the zone. And I know a lot of guys that I fished with who are really good um, this time of year when the conditions are absolutely nasty, they will idle around, they'll find the fish, they'll get just up from the fish and basically spot lock and toss the bobbers straight out back behind the boat. And even when you like really can't have effective boat control, you can just let those bobbers sit there. And that is definitely one of the best ways to catch walleyes this time of year. If you look at a bobber and you think, oh, that's for panfish or that's for amateurs, that is a massive mistake because it is a very, very effective tool to catch walleyes. The last mistake, mistake number five, is not fishing at night or not fishing during low light periods. Obviously, right now, this is like the middle of the day, high sun, I got the shadow over my face, unfortunately, which is not great for filming. You can definitely catch fish, even on lakes that aren't super great. You can catch them during the day, but the very, very best time to catch walleyes is during the low light period. Uh, so what a lot of people will do is they'll get done with work, four o'clock, five o'clock, they'll go grab the boat, they'll run out to the lake, and they'll fish from like five or six to like eight or nine or so. And more often than not, what they'll find out 
is uh, the bite might be a little slow when they get out there, but eventually they'll figure them out. They'll end up getting into a pretty good bite around like eight, nine, nine thirty or so. And then what they'll do is they'll head back in because maybe they gotta get up early the next morning or maybe they don't feel comfortable running their boat at night or whatever, whatever it might happen to be. If you're willing to stay out there maybe a couple more hours, you might get into the absolute best walleye bite on your favorite lake that you've ever been on. And uh, getting some clouds here. It's actually pretty funny sometimes when I'm talking to my buddies, maybe we're texting or something, and uh, we might say like, oh, got into a really good bite out on Gull, or you know, or whatever lake around the area. Um, and it's funny because instantly what, what the question will be is like, oh, well, were you fishing at night? If you were fishing at night, well, that doesn't really count. That's kind of like cheating. If you go out and catch fish in some of these super clear, stocked, high pressure walleye lakes, during the day, that's not always an easy feat. Even if you're a really good angler, you could come out and maybe the fish are just like not snapping or the bite just is not on. That's not an uncommon thing to happen, but going out at night is a really good way to just fill the live well with good eater sized fish. It's also, in some cases, the very, very best time to go catch some of the biggest walleyes in the lake. Uh, I know earlier this year, I was uh, out a couple times with my buddy Brett McComas, and he actually spent a ton of time out night trolling this spring, and uh, he caught some very, very giant fish trolling for walleyes at night. Anyway, what I'm saying is walleye fishing is really good at night. Don't head in early. Forget about dinner. Bring dinner out with you. Stay out till 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, midnight, whatever it is, and fish a little bit longer, and you'll catch a lot more fish. So just something to think about. Um, but yeah, that is uh, the five biggest mistakes that I see walleye, angl walleye anglers make this time of year during the summer. So don't make any of those mistakes and uh, you'll be catching more walleyes this year. So, all right, since you made it to the end of this video, I have another video that I think you're really gonna like. I'll put it right there. And that is my top five summertime walleye tactics that I like to use. Little spoiler, Bobber is one of them, but there's four more. And uh, I think if you watch that video, you're gonna learn something. So check it out right there.